Hi everyone, Nate Meyer here. In this episode of Nature in Place Off the Shelf, I'd like to talk about the author Robert Michael Pyle. I'd actually intended to go a much different direction this week, but in digging around in my bookshelf, I happened to find a copy of Sky Time and Graves River by Robert Michael Pyle that he had inscribed to me back in 2007. That got me digging back into the book, and I found a wonderful essay about spring and trilliums that I thought just seemed to fit the phenological wave of spring wildflowers passing over Minnesota right now. So it just seemed too timely to pass up. Robert Michael Pyle was born around the mid 20th century and publishes up to today. He's a well-respected scientific naturalist with a PhD in Lepidoptera studies or butterfly studies. He's published field guides on butterflies, and he actually founded the Xerxes Society. I'll post a link in the comments where he tells a story of how he came up with the Xerxes Society. But Pyle's also a very diverse nature writer. He's published some 18 books and hundreds of essays on various topics and in various forms. He's published everything from, you know, classic naturalist studies where he tours various areas and digs into the natural history of those areas, to poetry, and even travel essays. In addition to winning awards for his scientific studies, Robert Michael Pyle also won the John Burroughs Medal for Distinguished Nature Writing in 1987 for his book Wintergreen. To give you a flavor of Robert Michael Pyle's writing, I thought I'd read a brief passage from the essay on trilliums um, that is in his book, Sky Time and Grace River. I'll post a link in the comments uh, to a Google version of the book where you can read some brief passages from his essays, including uh, a part of this essay on trilliums. But in this essay, he talks about finding a trillium blooming on the spring, spring equinox, which seemed particularly resonant to him. And here's a, a quick passage that he wrote about trilliums. While I'm equally a captive of lilacs and irises, nothing among the wild flora speaks to me of the redemption of spring like the trillium. To me, the redemptive power of Teovatum has nothing to do with any imagined Christian symbolism. Rather, something about the improbable unfolding of the three great-hearted leaves, followed by the bombast of a big white lily, somehow reconstituted from the dark, dank elements of soil and rot, says, quote, carry on. When the first trillium appears on a logging road bank, I take hope. It's as simple as that. It seemed right one year when this event and so much more happened on the spring equinox. As spring and the wildflowers wash over Minnesota, I hope we can all celebrate that moment of the first sight of the trillium. I know we're looking forward to seeing the trilliums start to bloom in our yard. I'm sure that you can find copies of Robert Michael Pyle's books, essays, and his collections of poems online or at your local bookstores. But one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about him today is that some of his writing is accessible in great nature writing periodicals like the Orion Magazine and Terrain.org. I'll link to both of those in the comments. So how about a little armchair advanced training to get to know Robert Michael Pyle? I'll post a few links in the comments to some of Pyle's work. What I encourage you to do is read his brief description of how he founded the Xerxes Society. There's also a great interview with Pyle that was posted in terrain.org that you can read. And finally, I'll post links to some of his work. I hope you enjoy um, digging into Robert Michael Pyle and you enjoy his work and enjoy this time as you uh, nature in place while we all shelter in place. Have a great time. Have a great week.